Hi, Fang! Hello, everyone. Welcome to a... To the TLC review. And all I've got to say is, is that TLC was a very fun show. Very fun. Put that down there so it doesn't get in the way. It was a very fun show. I will definitely tell you that. So let's run down the results and I'll give you guys my thoughts and opinions as we go along. So we had a pre show match, it was Roberto Correa versus Andrade. And Roberto Correa gets the win here. They are still continuing the storyline where Andrade and Zelina Vega um, are breaking up. So, and I love how salty everybody is. You want to know why? You want to know why I'm so happy about it? Is because the thing is, is that is that this has been going on for so long. And when and when you break something up that the fans really enjoy, they lose their shit. I mean, like. We all know this. We all we all expected it, and this is the thing with these fans; they just don't know when it's time for a breaking point. Do they not? Re do 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 they really think Zelina Vega and Andrade should be be together forever? That's how these fans react. These fans want Andrade and Zelina Vega to be together forever. That's how these people act. It was only a matter of time before Andrade and Zelina Vega move on. And 2020 is the year it has to happen. I told you guys why on my Raw review. Why I'm okay with it. And I don't need to explain it again. But I'll, but I'll explain a little bit more in a bit of more detail. It's the fact that Andrade and Zelina have been together since NXT, and and here's the thing: Zelina hasn't really been giving Andrade a lot of success on the main roster. So Andrade blaming Zelina Vega for the reason why he hasn't been successful on the main roster is kind of actually good storytelling because she obviously guided him to the NXT Championship, but he hasn't been able to win a championship at all on the main roster. So at least that way it's easier for him to say Zelina Vega is the reason why I can't win a title. But the thing is, I'm fine with this breakup. I'm fine with this. And, and the main reason why people don't like this is because, oh, Andrade can't speak English very well. I mean, look at the Kabuki Warriors. Like, they don't need Paige. They didn't need Paige, and look how good they're doing. Andrade doesn't need a manager. Just have him speak Spanish or whatever. Whatever language this guy speaks, just have him speak his natural language. Look at the AOP. They speak their natural language. Look at the Kabukis. They speak Japanese. Seriously, the end solution doesn't mean you have to have a manager. Oh, okay then, Patrick. If, the, if, you're, if that's the way you feel... Then why is Sami Zayn with Shinsuke Nakamura? I agree. I don't think Sami Zayn should be with Shinsuke Nakamura. But the only thing that I love about Sami Zayn is how he dances to Shinsuke's music. It just makes it so much more funny. But, but yeah, I agree. Shinsuke doesn't need Sami Zayn. I don't think that. I don't. I I I agree. Shinsuke doesn't need Sami. So, that's, so yeah. Anyway, Roberto got the win there, and Andrade and Zelina continue their storyline on their breakup. So the opening match on the main show was the New Day versus the Revival. Very good tag team match here, and it was a it was a very good tag team match. A lot of brutal spots, but in the end, the New Day retain, and they remain tag team champions. I love how people say the New Day are stale, but New Day is still one of the most over teams in WWE. 
Now, when you say the word stale, when you say the word stale, stale means people no longer care and they think it's time for a change. That's what stale means. That's what I called Andrade and Zelina Vega as a pair. I've called them stale and I think it's time for them to break up. Same thing with Alexa Bliss. I said her run as a heel was getting stale. I want her as a babyface. And now they've got her as a babyface. That is stale. That's what stale means. It means you think it's time for a change. The New Day are not stale yet. The fans still love them. They're still over. They're still one of the most popular teams going around. So, people can say they're stale all they want, but the more the fans love the New Day, the more not-so-stale they are. Yeah, I agree. I think the New Day should eventually break up, but it just doesn't seem like the New Day are ever going to break up. I don't think WWE is going to break up the New Day until they become... I mean, I, I think that I think they wanted to have the New Day to hold the record of the most tag team title runs. And I think the record is nine. So I don't think the New Day are going to be breaking up until they surpass that record. That's when I think they'll do it. But overall, I don't see much of anything. So next we have, so the New Day retain. They are still the tag team champions. Love both teams. It was a great match. Next we have Alistair Black versus Buddy Murphy. Me personally, I am very happy that Buddy Murphy was able to make it onto a pay-per-view. Now, yes, he's been now yes he's been cruiserweight champion on these pay-per-views, but you got to remember how many times was Buddy Murphy put on the pre-show during his cruiserweight title run? I think 90% of the time that he was on the pay that he was on these main card pay-per-views, he was always on the pre-show, except for Survivor Series and the Super Showdown in Melbourne, Australia. So two out of how many? He was always on the pre-show. This is finally he is on the main card, and he and Alistair Black, they put on a ripper of a match. I freaking love these two guys. They're absolutely incredible. This was a great match. Buddy Murphy needs to be a champion by 2020. He needs to have gold around his waist in 2020 WWE. You can't have talent like Buddy Murphy slip under your fingers. He and Alistair Black tore it down. And and you can't and 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 also and also I'm going to say this, I said this in my predictions as well. I knew Buddy Murphy was always going to lose, but all I wanted was an excellent match, and that is exactly what we got. We got an excellent match between two phenomenal wrestlers. I knew Alistair Black was winning. I just wanted to see these two guys deliver an awesome match, and that is indeed what we saw, an excellent match between both Buddy Murphy and Alistair Black. Alistair Black got the win with the Black Mass kick. To Buddy Murphy. Hope one hope hope one day these two. Hopefully one day these two battle it out again. Next we had the Viking Raiders issue an open challenge and out came the OC. Well, I predicted it. I guess I did say on my predictions. I believe I'm predicting the OC. So. I guess I somehow got got it right. I somehow predicted that the that the OC were going to take them on. The OC bragged about how they are the best tag team in the world, but they still don't have the tag team titles, so you're not really the best tag team in the world yet. You know, this match was okay. It wasn't too bad. But I think the one thing I didn't like was the result here. It was a double count out. I don't know why. I don't know why they went with a double count out. To me, I thought it was really, really silly of them to do that. I mean, the only thing that would make sense to me is maybe they want to start an OC Viking Raiders feud. And, you know, maybe that's all I can think of. They probably want to start a feud between them. But, I mean, I would much rather something different. At least, at least what the Viking Raiders are doing is better than them fighting jobbers every week. 
So we got a double count out. There was a group of people sitting in the front row with KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and then the, and then Carl Anderson grabs the table and he gets slanted through it by the Viking Raiders. Well done, Carl. You stupid idiot. That's what happens when you destroy KFC. The Kentucky Fried Chicken. Next we had King Corbin versus Roman Reigns. I really didn't care about this match. And King Corbin got the win here with the assist of Dolph Ziggler and The Revival. Ziggler smacked the chair across Roman's face. Delivered a zigzag and The Revival did the, did the uh, shatter machine. And Corbin got the win with the end of days. And the end of days... No one has kicked out of the end of days, by the way. Not even the almighty Roman Reigns. Not even the almighty Roman Reigns has successfully kicked out of the end of days. That is actually very impressive. I am, I am actually very impressed that WWE still has had no one kick out of the end of days. I thought John Cena did. I thought John Cena did when they wrestled each other at SummerSlam. I guess not. I guess I guess Corbin never did it on John Cena, but but it's very impressive that no one has kicked out of the end of days. The end of days is a good finisher. Don't get me wrong. The end of days is a is a very impactful finisher. And if the end of days is beating Roman Reigns, then they're really doing a good job of making the end of days a very devastating finisher. Overall. It is what it is here in this TLC match. It is what it is. No disqualifications. You would expect that from someone like King Corbin. Next we had The Miz taking on Bray Wyatt in a... Um, we had The Miz versus Bray Wyatt. And uh, this was a short match. This was actually the shortest match here. And uh, Bray Wyatt got the win with delivering two Sister Abigails. Uh, Miz dominated majority of the match. I, I, I guess this is what you call a... I guess this is what you call a 2K game. I guess this is what you call something from 2K games. Where you give someone finishes. Because that's what it felt like. It felt like the Miz had one finisher, which was the Skull Crushing Finale. And Bray Wyatt had two. And he delivered two Sister Abigails... And those two Sister Abigails was enough to win the match. I mean, this is a good storyline, don't get me wrong. But again, this makes no sense. Bray Wyatt is beating The Miz. I mean, now that Daniel Bryan's back, because Daniel Bryan came back today. Which was expected. Which was expected. But I didn't think he was going to come back at TLC. I was thinking maybe they'll save his appearance, but, you know, they brought him back now. Um, well, now that Daniel Bryan's back, I guess The Miz can now happily live his life with Maurice and his two kids. He doesn't have to worry about Bray Wyatt stalking his wife anymore. And Daniel Bryan has cut his hair. He's lost his beard. He's got a short beard. Kind of a little bit like mine, but maybe a little bit more... More browner, more whitey browner than mine. And he's also got short hair. So we've gone back to the Daniel Bryan of 2012? I think, I think this is the Daniel Bryan of 2012. Because I do remember he had short hair. When he dated AJ Lee, I think this was Daniel Bryan's look when he dated AJ Lee. But, but yeah, he's gone back to his old look. Daniel Bryan looks better that way, to be honest. He looks better that way, to be perfectly honest. But, but damn, it was pretty hard to recognize him. But I'll, I'll tell you that. And also, The Fiend actually appeared on the Titantron as well. But, you know, it, it, it's uh, kind of hard to tell. Well, it wasn't hard to tell, but The Fiend did appear on the Titantron. It, it's kind of, they're kind of making it look like that The Fiend and Bray Wyatt are two different people. That's kind of like what it feels like here, but anyway, I guess that this was good. I really hope they have Bray Wyatt target Brie Bella now, because I felt like, I feel like 
Bray going after Brian's family with Bree and their child, I think that makes more sense than what they were doing with the Miz. I really hope they include Brie Bella into this storyline. I really, I really hope they do, because it makes more sense. It makes more sense for Bray to target Brian's family than the Miz's family. So hopefully, they get back on track here. So next we had Bobby, Bobby Lashley with Lana take on Rusev. This was the one match I couldn't care less about. This was the one match I didn't didn't care about from the very very start. Never cared about it, never did. And Bobby Lashley got the win due to Lana's help. So yeah, and and, and because and because Rusev lost, everybody thinks Rusev pissed somebody off backstage. I think that's pretty funny. I find that funny. Rusev loses a match and all of a sudden everyone's like, Oh, what did Rusev do backstage to cause this to happen? How about nothing happened backstage? How about I tell you guys the, the honest truth? Nothing happened backstage. It's called storytelling. They are continuing the feud. Sure, I don't want this feud to continue as much as anybody else does. But Bobby Lashley winning with Lana's help clearly tells you that this feud is not over. So no, he didn't piss anybody off backstage. It's called the feuds continuing. So I guess when a feud continues, it's all of So I guess that means when a feud continues, it's, oh, so-and-so pissed someone off backstage. What? It's so stupid. It's so stupid talk by these internet wrestling darlings, I swear. Stupid talk, I tell you. I mean, I think Rusev really needs to have a woman here. I think Rusev really needs to have a woman by his side to deal with Lana. Now, I would pick someone different, but I've got a feeling I kind of know... Well, if they do include a woman. If they do include a woman, I think I know who they're going to go with. But I hope they don't go with it. I've been, I've been hearing that they may include Nia Jax. In this whole story, Rusev and Nia Jax. I don't know why I've, I don't know where I heard that, but Nia Jax. I've got that funny feeling they could include Nia Jax to this whole situation because you know Rusev needs a damn woman. He needs a damn woman to help him defend against Lana because with Lana bloody poking him in the eyes and doing everything to him, she needs someone to back him up. Rusev needs someone to back him up. Do I, do I think Nia is good for that story? Honestly, no. And the only good thing about Nia being in this storyline, yeah, she's in a terrible storyline, but two, she's on Raw. And I know a lot of people don't want her near Sasha. So there's that. I would much rather someone who I don't mind being in it. Someone like Natalia. I wouldn't mind if Natalia and Rusev paired up. I mean, you don't need to have them date or anything. They don't need to date or anything. You could just have you could just have Rusev be all like, "Oh, hey, I've got a woman to you know to help me to help me get my hands on Lashley and deal with you, you know, Lana." And I mean, I think Natalia would be the most over female on the roster if she was to deliver a sharpshooter to Lana, and you see Lana pathetically tapping out on the outside. I don't know. I think that'd be more hilarious. But I've got a feeling they'll probably go with Nia. I would personally go with Natalia because she's actually a better option than Nia. I don't know. I'm just saying Rusev really needs a woman in this feud. And finally, we're going to be talking about the main event. The match of the night. And I'm sick and tired of hearing the people complain about how it's garbage. Oh, sloppy this, sloppy that. Shush. And I'm going to tell you why to shush. This match was brilliant. It's a TLC match. Of course there's going to be some sloppy moments. Or some gut or some silly moments in there. It's a TLC match. You can't perfectly perform a TLC match. Even 
Even the Dudleys and Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys had sloppy TLC matches. Well, maybe not matches. Even they had some sloppy moments in their table ma in their TLC matches. A TLC match. You can't say a TLC match is boring. How if you think if you think someone crashing through ladders, crashing through tables, having steel chairs cracked over their back or whatever, if you find that stuff boring, then in my personal opinion, you're not a reviewer. You're just someone who just shits on the company for actually doing something that is very entertaining. And more importantly, these are the four best talents. These are the four best talents in the company. Four of the best women's wrestlers in the company, and you're crapping on this match? Oh, because Kyrie Sane had a few botchy moments. Oh, and there was a few, there was a few sloppy moments here and there. So you're gonna use Kyrie's botch and a few sloppy moments. Put that equals the match is terrible. So those few moments, to to you, made the match terrible. The match was brilliant. It was a great match. It elevated Kyrie Sane and Oscar. It elevated them up. As 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 you as a serious threat, them beating Becky Lynch and Charlotte made them credible. It made them look credible. Oscar is most likely going to take on Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble next year in 2020. So we're going to have the same. So we're going to have Becky and Oscar wrestle each other. We saw them wrestle each other this year. At the Royal Rumble, and we're going to be seeing them wrestle each other again, because in 2020, because Becky Lynch has a debt to collect, and that debt is Oscar. I mean, personally, I feel like uh, Becky Lynch should be dropping the Raw Women's Title soon. I don't want her to drop it at Mania, because I feel like dropping it, having her drop it at Mania, just, I mean, it makes sense, but that would mean. You would have to have Becky Lynch hold on to it for 365 days. I don't care who Becky drops the title to, as long as it's not Ronda or Shayna. As long as it's not... I don't care who it is, as long as it's Ronda or Shayna are not the two names they are planning on putting Ronda Rousey in front of at WrestleMania. As long as it's not them two, I don't care who they want to give the belt to. Arthur Becky. Ronda and Shayna are no-nos. They're no-nos. So the Kabuki Warriors win. They retain their tag team titles after a classic tag team match. Classic TLC match. This is personally a great match. And yes, Kairi Sane suffered a concussion during this match. And I give all my prayers to Kairi Sane. And also, apparently, Charlotte got hurt as well. So I wish her a speedy recovery as well. Everybody's too busy crapping on the match instead of, you know, hoping Kyrie and Charlotte get better and, on, on, and hope they're okay. As far as I know, I heard Kyrie got concussed. I don't know about I don't know about Charlotte. I heard she got hurt too. I only heard Kyrie got a concussion. Maybe Charlotte's injury isn't as bad as a lot of people thought. But all I'm saying is this was a brilliant TLC, t TLC tag team match. I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. A few sloppy moments doesn't make the match garbage. I am sorry to disappoint everybody, but a few sloppy moments doesn't make the match garbage. Great match. Five stars for me. That was a five star match. The women always deliver. And that's the thing I hate about this and that's the thing I hate about this goddamn community. They, these people, they wanted the women to be treated better. And then this will be the last thing I will say before I go. I, I, I hate this community because everybody wanted the women to be treated better. During the whole Divas era, everybody was so sick and tired of the eye candy, the good looking girls, and, and they wanted the women to be treated better. During the whole Divas era. And then we finally move on from the Divas era, era and the women are started are being treated equally to the men and everybody are still shitting on the women's wrestling. It shows you how fickle everybody is.
So there you go, guys. TLC was a fun show. I really enjoyed it. Bobby Lashley and Rusev was the only match I really didn't like. Every other match I thought was, you know... Well, the Corbin match was decent. The Viking Raiders OC match was okay. But other than that, the other matches I thought were really well done and very good. So that's all I've got for you guys. Hit that thumbs up if you guys enjoyed the review. Subscribe, and I'll see you all tomorrow for my Raw review. See you guys then.